All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. In today's video, I wanna to talk to you guys about the main crop. This is the main crop of figs. We just actually, in the last video, talked about the Brabas. The Brabas, just to recap really quickly, is the, the figs that form on last year's growth. They're the figs that ripen first. It's the first crop they ripen typically in the spring or in the early summer. Um, they're definitely of an inferior quality, and most of the time, they're, of, um, they're less in quantity. So the main crop though is what we really focus on. It's the second crop ripening at the end of the summer, in the fall. It ripens on, it forms, excuse me, on the new growth of the season. And it's typically of a higher quality and of a higher quantity. So this is really what we focus on a lot of. And I think a lot of people, what I really want you guys to understand in this video is a little bit of insight as to how the main crop figs actually form, right? So I said that they form on the new the new growth here, but there's a lot more happening behind the scenes of that new growth. So let me bring you on through like a little bit of a timeline. So this tree here is called Lampira 1 and you can see very clearly that this fig is trying to put out fruit because down in there where the leaf stem attaches to the main branch are two different distinct buds and these I call them the double dots, you may have heard from me uh, speak on them about this way. So each of those buds represents something different. One is a new fig and the other bud is a new branch. So this is the beginning process of the fruit development, the beginning of the main crop development. This even in a smaller size, depending on the variety, is not very visible and it's still happening, but it's very difficult to see depending on the fig I do find that something like Celeste, as an example, it's really hard to tell that there's two double dots going on in here with a number of the Celeste varieties I grow. Uh, whereas another variety like Hardy Chicago, it becomes very obvious that these double dots are present and they show themselves quite early in the development and the growth of these, these branches. Uh, but Again, th this is happening very slowly behind the scenes and you need a few things to ensure that you get these little figs to eventually form. One of which is you need to have the right amount of light. We've talked a lot about this, but if you don't have the right amount of light and it's different for every single fig, guys, every single variety has a different requirement of light and that's the intensity of light and the duration of light. If you meet that requirement, on the branches themselves, as the fig, as the branches are growing, you will see the fruit buds form and they will set along the branches. And then eventually, as the figs then form further, they grow to a larger size, they then become somewhat visible here, as you can see on the branch. Then they'll get to an even larger size. And then they will even swell to a larger size. And guess what? They're gonna to get to a certain size within about 30 days once they start forming like this, and then they'll stay stagnant. They will not get to a larger size, and they will stay at that size for 30 more days. And then people always ask me, they're like, Ross, well, why are my figs not getting larger? They're not growing, is something wrong? Well, this is just normally how every single fig works. They get to a certain size, they stay stagnant at that size, before then moving up to the next size. And that next size happens almost overnight. It's really pretty incredible. Um, and then finally, after two or three times of them sitting at that stagnant stage, they then start to swell and then become soft, change color, and they become ripe. So that's kind of the progression here of the main crop. You need obviously a couple more things besides the light. Of course, is your tree healthy? right? Is it getting enough water? Is it, does it have enough nutrients? Is the fig mosaic virus by chance affecting it too much? Uh, do you have enough soil microbes? You know, just so many things related to the soil, but also, you know, is there enough soil metabolisms, right? Enough soil heat. Those temperatures increase the fig tree's metabolism. Just like us as humans, we operate at a certain temperature. The fig trees like to have a temperature of 78 degrees Fahrenheit in the soil. And that's the most optimal temperature. So they need warmer temperatures in the soil and the root, the root zone of the plant. 
to actually metabolically operate. So you need all three of those things. Those are really the three main things to get these fruits to form. And I think that's what I'm doing today. And that's why I'm making this video is because it's the middle of June and I'm saying to myself, well, let me look at all the trees. Let me look at all the branches. Let me see where the fruit development's at. Do I have small figs that are forming? Maybe in this Lampira One's case, I have very small figs that are kind of dormant along the branch that have yet to form, but the fruit buds are there. Maybe I have a tree that doesn't have any fruit buds. And there's a tree right here that looks like it may not fruit this season. It's called Verdino Giacomo. This is a tree that I air layered off of something I had in the ground, put it in a, in a container, and it just, maybe it's just the fact that it's just a little bit too young. Maybe I need to somehow give it a little bit more light. You know, these are the kind of things that I'm going through with, in my mind that you guys ought to go through right now as well, because if you're not seeing the fruit buds or you're not seeing fruit by a certain point of your season, you kind of should intervene and do something different, right? Well, maybe this Verdino Giacomo, let's just say it's not very healthy. Well, then maybe I want to give it some compost tea. Maybe I want to give it a little bit of extra water. Maybe I want to really inspect the soil. How's the roots doing? You know, um, maybe it's not getting enough light. So maybe I need to put this tree actually into a location that maybe gets another hour or two of light every day. Um, you know, there's so many things here, guys, that you need to consider. And this is really why I'm, I'm telling you this. And this is really what I do. I go through all the trees and I make this, this judgment. So the next thing I also kind of been thinking about right now is, well, when are they going to ripen? Because, well, they're just now forming or they're still dormant on the branches themselves. How many days is it going to be before I actually get to eat the figs? And typically it's 70, 90, 110, 120 days and anything really in between, depending on the variety, even slightly depending on where you guys live, the soil temperatures really impact those number of days. So if it's cold, if it was supposed to be 70, it might go to 90, right? So as an example, I'm thinking about, well, when are they going to ripen? So then I'm thinking, well, when is my first frost? Because if they're going to ripen in October and I only have a month of growing season left because November 1st is my first frost, well, then there's kind of a problem, right? And that the figs that I know from experience ripen in 110 or 120 days, that's a lot of time. So I need to get them forming right away. Or maybe at a certain point in my season, like around July 1st, July 15th, that's really the last day for the majority of the figs here in my location. If I'm not seeing the fruit on the trees then, it's very likely I won't get to ripen them by the end of the season, especially the really late ones. Um, and then I have to do intervene. I have to come in here and do something else, right? As the grower, as the one who's kind of in control of these trees, we can do something called pinching, which is just very simply removing the apical bud. Um, it's a form of summer pruning. So by removing the apical bud, as you can see here, this is kind of a demonstration of just pinching this off with your thumb. This is the growth tip. And you can do this on all of the branches. You can do it on some of the branches. This changes the hormones within the trees. And by changing the hormones in the trees, just like any other fruit tree, it's not different. The figs are no special, they're no different. Just like with this cherry tree as an example. If I do myself some summer pruning, which I need to do after I harvest all the fruits and take off this net that's kind of in my way here. But as soon as I do, my summer pruning, this is sort of in a way encouraging this, these trees to actually set more fruiting wood for next year to set those fruit buds. Now, if I instead prune in the winter time, that's only encouraging the trees to grow the following season, right? The hormones and the changes in the hormones, depending on when you prune, is very different. And the effects, at least now in the summer, by removing these apical buds, encourages these trees, these fruits to form if they have not yet formed and maybe even speed up the ripening process quite a bit. Um, so a tree like this here, this Lampira one, it seems to be a bit stubborn, right? It should have plenty of time to form this fruit, but it just hasn't. So what's the deal? Well, some of these varieties guys, regardless of where you live, some of them just 
truly and honestly require some kind of intervention. You know, um, yeah, this variety is quite late and maybe it will form within the length of your season in Southern California, but uh, for someone like me, some real intervention is, is necessary. So I wanna show you guys now, before I let you guys go, some of the fruits that have um, formed here on the branches that we're looking at. And you can see a lot of these branches are really loaded this year on the in-ground trees. And I'm definitely expecting hundreds of fruits this year from a number of these varieties. These are trees, as we mentioned in the, the update we did about the in-ground trees, we talked about how they survived the winter. And you can see a lot of main crop development there. And uh, this is my little ruby. And it does in fact ripen typically last year by August 1st. That would certainly be nice if it happens again. Uh, but I expect everything this year to be about a week later. So maybe by August 10th would be the last day I would expect them to ripen. But a lot of the potted trees, probably the earliest ones here, because we are a bit late this year, I would expect maybe August 10th, the middle of August, for them to start their production. But because these in-ground trees, they have a lot of energy, they're in a really nice spot here in the southwest corner, they're close to the house. These guys get a lot of soil temperatures and especially early in the season. So even this Rondé Bardot is just filled with fruits and should ripen by very early in August. There is a lot of fruits here on these trees. And uh, it is all up and down these branches because that wood was preserved from the prior season. The same thing is, can be said here for this Moro de Caneva. This is a variety called Fico Seco. And I actually have a, another one that's not as close to the house. It's right over here. It's called Nerino. It is also a Moro de Caneva. And the fruits are actually slightly behind the younger and less mature Fico Seco that we just looked at. But because it's against the house, there's definitely some extra soil temperatures earlier in the season that I think have increased the production by about a week or made the production about a week earlier. The same thing can be said over here for this Azores Dark, which is a bit smaller and less mature than this taller and way more mature Azores Dark. But the production actually, even though the tree here, this is Oris Dark, it's not that far away from the house. The difference in soil temperatures, I think, is enough to actually have this smaller and less mature Azores Dark ripen a week earlier this year. The main crop development, you can see, is actually quite a bit different on those two trees. Some other ones here that we can look at really quickly. This is LSU Hui. It does a really nice job at putting out a lot of fruit in a high dense system that we have. So a lot of these nodes have put out fruit already. This one here is JH Adriatic and it's quite young, really not that established, but guess what? It is forming now the fruit buds here along the branch. So this is the beginning phase and yeah, it is a little bit later than these other figs that we just looked at. So that's part of it, but also JH Adriatic, it takes a while for the fruit buds to even be visible here on the branch. So it is a little bit tricky sometimes. You might think, all right, well, I'm doing the right thing, right? Checking out all the fruit buds. I'm not seeing the fruit buds that, that I want, but it does depend on the variety, right? Some of the varieties don't show their fruit buds, that double dot that we look for as early as the others. So it can be a bit tricky, but it is really good guys. And that's what I wanted to cover with you guys is to look at these individual branches the individual fruit buds here and see if you can see that main crop development on the branches or not, because now is really the time to intervene in some way to fix this. It may not just be your season. You may have to wait a little bit for these things to mature, get a year older, but there's probably something you can do to intervene. And, and uh, I hope that you guys understand how the main crop works now, how it forms, how many days it takes to ripen. And um, now that you guys got to look at some of my trees, you can kind of see what you might expect from your own. So thank you for watching this one. I hope you guys got something out of this. Hit that subscribe button, check out our blog. Catch you guys for the next video. Take care.